Hello, we are going to solve this problem number 32. The question is determine the magnitudes and direction of the currents through R1 and R2 in this figure here. Okay, I think I will draw two uh, loop current here. Let's name this. Let's name this here as I1 here. And another loop here because we have two loops, right? So we will have this as I2. So I will have this as I1 and this as I2. However, here we can also have this branch current here. It is the same value as this loop here. So here I will have this current here as I1. However, I also have this current here that is the same as I2. So I will have this current here as I2. Okay, I still have one unnamed branch current here and I think I will, I will use it, I will draw it like this. So this is I3. And if we name this as uh, junction A, we can use KCL, the Kirchhoff current law, at junction A. KCL at A. Okay, and KCL said that the sum of the current that goes in will equal to the sum of the current that goes out. Right? And the only current that goes in is I1 here. So I will have I1 here. And then that will equal to I2 plus I3 because I2 and I3 both are going out. So I'll have it like this. Or we can isolate it for I3. So we will have I3 is equal to uh, I1 minus I2. I1. Okay, I think this is the only thing that we can do from this junction here. And now we can use KVL at both loop I1 and loop I2. But first, I think I will mark the polarity of each component here. And for the battery here, the positive side is the long one here. So this is the positive polarity. And this one is the negative one. And for the resistor, I just follow this current here. It is flowing from the positive side to the negative side. So I will have this is plus and this is minus. And here for I3, the same. It came from here to here. So the positive side is here. And then the positive, the negative side is here, right? And then this is a battery here. So I will have the positive side is the long one. And the short one is the negative one. Okay. And now maybe let's take a note at its voltage here. Note. Here I will have the voltage of R1. So the voltage of R1 there is actually uh, I1 multiplied by R1, right? So I will have 22 multiplied by I1. Okay, that is v, the voltage in the, this resistor. And then for the R2 here, I will have, the value is 18. So I will have 18 multiplied by I3, right? Because the current that passed through this resistor is I3. Okay, I think we are set now. Let's do KVL. So the Kirchhoff voltage law or the Kirchhoff loop rule. So I will have KVL at loop I1. And KVL said that the sum of the voltage in a loop will equal to zero. Okay, now let's start from this component here and look at this. The loop current is flowing from the positive side to the negative side. So our sign will be positive. So I will have plus 9 volt. So I will have 9. And then here again, the current is flowing from the positive side to the negative side. So I will have 
the voltage of R1. And then what else I will have here? Again, the current is flowing from the positive side to the negative side. So the sign will be positive. So we will have plus the voltage of R2. Okay, all of that will equal to zero. But then we can substitute this. So I will have 9 plus the voltage of R1. That will be 22I1. And then plus PR2. That is 18I3. Okay, and all of that will equal to zero. And now I can do I3 here is equal to I1 minus I2. So we will have 22I1 here. I will move this 9 to the right hand side. And then I will have 18 I3. I3 is I1 minus I2. 1 minus I2. And all of that will equal to 0. And now we can do distributing that 18. So I will have 22 I1 plus 18 I1. And then minus 18 I2. All of that will equal to 0. And now 22 plus 18, that will be 40, I think. Yeah. 40 I1. And then minus 18 I2. Oh, this is not 0, but this is 9 to the right hand side. So I will have minus 9. Minus 9, minus 9, and this will equal to minus 9. Okay, I think from this loop 1, we can save this as equation number 1. Okay, maybe let's save this, but we need to do one more loop. Okay, let's move it a little bit here so I get some space. Okay, I have some space here on the right, so let's do it like here. Okay, now let's do another KVL, but this time at loop I2. So now KVL at loop I2. Again, KVL said that the sum of the voltage in a loop will equal to zero. Okay, now let's analyze this. So we are working on this loop here as I2 here. Let's start from this battery here. And the current is flowing from the positive side to the negative side. So I will have positive sign. And then the magnitude is 6. So I will have 6 here on the, on the first voltage. And then here, we have to be careful here because the current is flowing from the negative side to the positive side. So I will have minus here and the voltage of R2. And there is only two components. So I will have all of that equal to 0. Good. Now let's substitute this R2 to this one. So I will have 6 minus 18I3. And that will equal to 0. But then I3 is I1 minus I2. So I'll have 6 minus 18 multiplied by I1 minus I2. And that will equal to 0. Now let's distribute this minus 18. So I'll have minus 18 I1 and then plus 18 I2. All of that will equal to 0. But then we can isolate that. So I will have 18 I1 minus 18 I2. Yeah, we can isolate this 6 into the left hand side. But then it looks like this. And this is equation number 2. Okay. I think that is good because we have two equations with two variables, right? So now we need to solve 1 and 2. Solve 1 and 2. Okay, now let's write that. So I will have 40. I1 and then minus 18 I2 and that will equal to minus 6 and then what else uh, the equation number 2 is 18 
i1 and then minus 18 i2 that will equal to 6. I think we can subtract this right we can subtract this so I will have 22 i1 and this will cancel each other and I will have this one minus 6 minus 9 I will have minus 15. Okay, and what is I1 then? Minus 15 divided by 22. I think we need calculator for that. So we will have, what is it? Minus 15 divided by 22. And I will have minus 0 0.6. Okay, minus 0. 6181 okay i think this looks like this and the unit is ampere okay this is i1 but then i need to find out i2 to get i3 okay maybe let's let's do it here maybe we are almost there we know that 18i1 minus 18i2 is equal to 6, right? So we will have 18 and then i1. i1, I think I will just use this, this fractional value. So I'll have minus 15 divided by 22. And then I will have minus 18i2. And that will equal to 6. Okay, and so I will have 18i2. 18i2 is equal to 18 multiplied by minus 15 divided by 22. And then minus 6. Okay, and we can divide 18 on the both sides, right? So I will have this is I2. And let's calculate the fractional or I mean the value, the decimal value of this one. So let's do it with calculator here. So I'll have 18 multiplied by minus 15 over 22. And then divide it by... I mean minus 6, okay, and then divide it by 18. Yeah, and then I will have minus, okay, minus 1.015, and the unit is ampere. Okay, now we know that I1 is uh, and I2 here. Okay, we need to conclude this and I think because we, our slide is full, let's erase this first. Okay, so far we have I1 and I2 and now we can calculate I3 and I3 is just I1 minus I2. So what is it? So we will have minus 0 0.6181. And then minus I2. Okay, I will have minus 1.01515. And I will have 3. Okay, that is I3, right? Is I3. I3 is 0 0.36. 0 0.369. Nine seven and the unit here is ampere, and so we will have I one, I two, and I three, and so determine the magnitude and direction of the currents through R one. So I will need to use the symbol like this. The current that pass through I one, R one, is here. So I will have the magnitude is zero point six one eight one eight ampere. But then the direction is not to the right because the sign is minus. The direction is to the left. To the left. 
and then the current that pass through R2, that will be this one here, 0 0.39697 ampere. And the, the direction is correct to the left here. So I will have to the left. And I think that is the final answer for this question. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.